Iran News Now. Economic and regional unrest overshadows Iran's election. A 37-year-old fitness instructor in Tehran, Maryam put her dislike for Iranian politicians aside for elections since her vote could alter things. She claims zero interest this year, the Islamic Republic of Iran will hold a special election for a new president on Friday after a helicopter crash last month killed President Ebrahim Raisi and numerous other officials. Point three of the four approved candidates are expected to win, Masoud Pazeshkian, a former health minister, is trying to give millions of Iranians hope that the system can be reformed, Saeed Jalali, an ultra-hardliner who was the country's lead nuclear negotiator more than a decade ago and remains committed to resistance to external pressure and influence, and Mohammed Bakr Kalabaf, the Speaker of Parliament and a pragmatic technocrat who was Tehran's mayor. Elections under the Tehran government are neither free nor fair. Be aware, this vote matters. In a period of significant internal and regional crisis, this election will affect the Islamic Republic's future. Due to the weak economy, public unhappiness with the clerical system is growing. Its aggressive and oppressive responses to the fires fuel the fired. If a majority of Iranians don't vote, the state's most insular and backward tendencies will persist. However, they would do it without popular legitimacy. If several people arrive, things get tricky. Presidential elections had historically been the only way Iranians could gauge the regime's decision making power, despite their tight choreography. Iranian elections can yield unexpected results, i.e., large numbers. Iranians have voted for reformist presidential candidates who advocated for foreign investment, better international relations, and social liberalization. Remember that reformists are not overthrowing the Islamic Republic. They alter it to extend its life. In 2013, many analysts believed that hardliner Jalali, the same guy on the ballot and the supreme leader's candidate to succeed Mahmoud Ahmadinejad as president, would win. However, more Iranians whose living standards collapsed after U.S. sanctions on Iran's oil exports took effect in 2012 were skeptical. Many resolved never to vote again, but when the election approached, they supported Hassan Rouhani, a cleric who promised interaction with the West to lift Iran's crippling sanctions. He had a strong social media presence and recommended Western-educated cabinet ministers. He gained steam immediately. Rouhani surprised and resoundingly won a majority of votes over six rivals. That election placed Jalali third. Kalabaf, another contender, finished second in 2013. Reformist Pazeshkian, repeating history, though much has changed in the past decade, living standards are worse than before. Pazeshkian promises Western engagement and social liberalization. He has questioned the rationale of strict hijab laws for women. Uncertain how he would accomplish these goals. He has former President Mohammad Khatami's support and Rouhani's foreign minister, U.S. educated Mohammad Javad Zarif, advising him. Jalali means retraction under U.S. pressure. Some of the regime's security elites may like that, but ordinary Iranians have rejected his isolationist ideals. In this three way race or a runoff, he is unlikely to gain a majority. Stalwarts may embrace a Jalali presidency ideologically, but his triumph would imply that the Iranian people have soured. Despite leading protest crackdowns as Iran's police chief, Kalabaf was a popular mayor with national profile. He offers a medium ground, preserve authoritarianism but improve people's quality of life through economic development, negotiating with the West as necessary. It's likely a race between Pazeshkian and Kalabaf. The system prefers large turnout for legitimacy and a runoff between these two. Since neither is deadly, it may live with either. Paradoxically, if the hardliner wins, the regime may be at its lowest ever.